morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. This morning, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the supplies you ne might need if you have your own goat herd. Our friends over at Gilbrook Farm had asked us to um, get together a video about some of the supplements and such that we use for our goats so that they could use it to help them with making some of their decisions. But unfortunately, we got way too busy and they moved really fast and got their goats and they have done an amazing job with getting together the supplements that they need. And they really did their research and I'm really proud of the decisions that they made and the supplies that they have on hand for their goats. So I'll try to remember to leave a link to their video about everything that they do. And I'll just go over a quick brief show of what we do so this is my basic requirements now this is basic this is if you don't run into any issues so one of the thing that we do weekly is the molly's herbal weekly formula and then every six to eight weeks we do the formula one or if somebody has signs that they have worms, then we'll do um, the formula two in their feed. And I just sprinkle it on top of their food. I tried making treat balls and everything like that and sprinkling on the food seems to work best. All right, then for accidents or injuries, we have, of course, the first aid antiseptic iodine. Um, I basically use this for the um, umbilical cords and if I had any injuries. Blood stop powder I keep on hand for in case I go too deep when I'm trimming hooves. Blue coat we use for any kind of wound. We do that when we um, disbud, we cover it with blue coat and if we had any wounds, we would use that. I have the um, vet wrap just in case we ever need it. The hoof trimmers and hoof brush and pick we use that to trim their hooves and that's why I bought the blood stop powder just in case I needed it. And excuse the barn dust on everything. I didn't really prepare this for you guys. Um, <laughs> this is just a basic. And then every six to eight weeks we do a copper bolus. And that's because almost all soils are low in copper and they do get a loose trace minerals that has some copper in it but it's not always enough and you can tell by their coat that it's not enough um, they'll get real scruffy looking um, vet rx this is sorry this is actually a poultry product but what it does for us and what we use it for on the goats is it's got um canada balsam camphor oil Oregon, Oregon oil, rosemary, and it's blended in a corn oil. And what we use this for on the goats is we put a few drops along their back when they have lice or mites. It helps prevent the lice or mites. They, they do not like those oils. Um, Nutri-Drench we give to our goats after they have given birth or any other stress factors. It's just a good combination of ingredients like calcium and no. selenium no. and vitamin A, D, and E, along with some molasses. Um, molasses is another thing I should have here, but it's in the house. Calcium drench, we use this for the goats have, that have given birth or are about to give birth. Calcium is very important for strong muscles and healing. Um, now, if I didn't use my fresh fruit and vegetable pulp, I would have vitamin C as an option too, but they get a ton of lemon halves in their fresh um, vegetables every day, so they don't need that. Probiotic Plus paste, I give that dose of that to any animal that is sick or has been sick or has given birth. Yeah. Selenium and vitamin E, I give to all of my pregnant does and um, just after they've given birth because we are deficient in selenium in our area and the vitamin E helps them absorb that. The high level vitamin B complex is an injection that I can give. So I have needles and syringes for that, but I luckily have not had to use that. So I haven't, that would be for a very stressful situation or a goat that is really doing poorly. I um, am lucky to say I haven't really had that situation come up. Of course, a thermometer to take their temperature. 
if I feel like there might be something wrong with them or they're acting strange, I will take their temperature and I've done that. And um, then for milking, I have my teat nutter wash, which I have a video on that, paper towels and coconut oil. That's all I use. That's it. That's all you need. And then if you are going to be breeding and you're going to have bucklings born, you're going to need banders. These are rubber bands with the banding tool to band their testicles and the electric dehorn her for disbudding. And that's about it other than the food, um, which I do like my food scoop. I, that's one of my favorite food scoops right there. Um, so that's about all of the basic essentials that you need. I'm probably missing something. There's probably stuff up at the house that isn't supposed to stay in the barn that I have. Um, but that is the basic everyday things that I'm going to use on a monthly basis or a weekly basis. But then there's things that you like to keep on hand for emergencies as well. As I was putting those things away, I noticed that I didn't mention the um, activated charcoal. And that is used if anybody has diarrhea or has eaten a plant that they shouldn't. That can be used to help with that. And the fact that I put apple cider vinegar in their water and kombucha sometimes too. And I let them drink kombucha from my cup because they love it and it's good for them. So that's a natural probiotic source that's really good for them is the, after the apple cider vinegar and the kombucha are both um, live active cultures. So they're really good for them as well. And I think that's about it. Um, I know I'm missing something important, but you guys will probably be able to tell me what I forgot to mention down in the comments. This was just a couple more things that I had up at the house that I didn't show you when I was down at the barn. I use ammonium chloride, a pinch of that in the boys' food to prevent urinary calci, the apple cider vinegar I add to their water, and the California mastitis test. This is used in this um, dish to determine if a goat has mastitis. You can test the milk. And then I use my essential oils, of course, and a syringe if I have to give an oral dose of something. I usually use a bigger syringe than this. I just couldn't find it for this video. So this is just a little bit more of what I use for my goats on my homestead. And say hello to our two new birds that were given to us today so um not sure if they're hens i think they are but they're only eight weeks old so they're we're, we're like 90 percent sure that they're actually a cornish cross meat bird so we're gonna probably harvest them i'm gonna get them fattened up if i am gonna do that they, they're pretty fat already though but I'm going to make sure that they're healthy. And this is our quarantine coop. So they will stay in here away from the other chickens for now. Either way. But if they start laying eggs, hey, they could be hens that are good layer production. But they look too fat to be regular layers. They look like Cornish cross to me. But I've never had Cornish cross, so not 100% sure. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Y'all see what that is? Look at that. Y'all see what I see? That's right. We have asparagus coming up all over the place. I am so happy about this, y'all. You don't even know. This is so cool. I've got little little asparagus from as tiny as a piece of grass all the way up tall sweet little babies here and there and everywhere I am so excited look all the way down that is awesome y'all and we are expecting rain so it's just going to help them even more look at this one this one's big all the way up to here. It's so cool. Look at this big guy. Booyah. 
How did I not notice that this morning? They're everywhere. They're popping up. They're doing well. And funny thing is, is I wouldn't have noticed this if I hadn't come down here. How many of y'all know what this is? I know what it is. I'm curious to see if you guys know what it is. And I'll give you one hint. The water is right there. We aren't but a few feet away from it. That's your hint. You tell me what you think that is. Give you size reference. It's pretty big. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, like and share, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.